Hey, what's up? It's Bart coming back at you with another episode of Stuck in My Generation. Wanted to do something a little bit special today. Today, if you didn't know, and I'm not going to pretend like I'm a super fan of this band, but Derek Wembley of Sum 41 released his memoirs today, October 9th, 2024. Uh, there's some shocking allegations in there regarding his former manager. Um, but let's stick to the topic at hand. Some 41 is no longer a band. Uh, I think this is the end for them. I know they did a final album. I think they're splitting. And I thought today would be a great day, not only to talk about what some 41 is, but talk about how they achieved greatness. And they did, in my opinion, they achieved greatness with one of the most underrated albums of all time, in my opinion, but we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about just what albums came before, what this band was, what they turned into. Not going to go super in depth. It's just I felt the need to talk about this band today because of the release and because of the fact that I introduced my son to this album, which is a favorite of mine. Absolutely stellar album, top to bottom, completely unexpected because I thought some 41 was always kind of goofy. Like some 41 to me is a pretty, was a pretty, is a pretty goofy band. So let's talk about their releases. This band got pretty big. They have over a million subscribers on YouTube music, which is, you know, I think it reflects their YouTube following too, but I'm sure on Spotify, it's even more than that. But I'm kind of surprised at how big this band got because seriously, me growing up in the pop punk days of the, you know, early nineties and, and on through the you know, 2010, probably when it really just dropped off a cliff. This was not a band I gave a crap about. I didn't care about them, didn't like them. Uh, just goofy and copycatish. Like I grew up on a lot of the bands that this band grew up on and then subsequently really went hard at copying those bands. So, first off, this band released Half Hour of Power in the year 2000. And there are some songs on here that some may recognize. YouTube Music thinks I want to download this album. I, by all means, do not want to download this album. This album was so... Okay, here. Check out track one, okay? Skip a little. Okay, it's not track one. Track one is their, like, We Like Iron Maiden song. Such a band of influences. But then we got Machine Gun. So I can't keep this up. I have had enough. I have spit I... I'm just kind of skimming along. This band wanted to be no effects so bad they couldn't stand it. And Blink. I mean, that's, that's no effects and Blinkish. If it's like they, they mixed the two bands in their mind and started making music like them. So anyways, Half Hour Power was, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, just the most generic pop punk of all time. Pop, 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 my microphone. The most generic pop punk of all time. I should have angled that to begin with, but the wind was blowing pretty bad. Then they released their album that kind of got them somewhere, All Killer No Filler, which was actually a pretty big improvement. And went for some more hardcore sound as well on some of the tracks. And we all know this one. They also mixed in some of their Beastie Boys-esque rap style into some of their music. I mean, this was a jam. Anyways, you get me. In Too Deep? Yeah. So the first album, they do nothing of substance, right? 
the second album they actually start hitting on some things and find out how to make pop punk hits and uh it absolutely worked for them not a bad album the first album i think was kind of bad second album was uh definitely an improvement uh in every way production quality uh writing songs you know nothing groundbreaking or mind-blowing here but all killer no filler was a fun pop punk album it wasn't anything to write home about except it was fun and they did have the formula to make that fun so i give them a little bit of credit on all killer no filler pretty darn good album for a what essentially is a copycat band but pop punk you know most of them were copycat bands so Half Hour of Power in the year 2000. All Killer No Filler in 2001. They wasted no time in getting back in the studio and released Does This Look Infected in 2002. And this is where you start to uh, you start to hear something happening with this band. You start to hear a sound that's evolving from more than just pop punk. Because obviously they grew up on some thrash, some metal some glam metal pop punk hardcore punk just straight punk they they are obviously fans of it all so they release does this look infected and they've got a little bit more of an angry sound and Derek wembley sounds better i like his voice now I'm starting to really dig his voice on does this look infected Still waiting. A sign of things to come. Good song. Still, still pop punky. Still kind of leaning into those influences pretty heavy. But you start to hear something new on Still Waiting. solid song really and then even the hook and the chorus is really solid this band's starting to come into their own good song like really good pop punk song right so what else do we have here still a lot of pop punk sounds yeah they're they're on their way to something and you can kind of hear it but you don't know if they're ever going to evolve or not all the way like are they gonna go stagnant are they gonna what are they gonna do but some 41 i never listened to any of these first three albums that i've talked about so far they were just kind of sprinkled into you know what i grew up on at the time like i'd hear it on mtv i'd hear some of the songs and you'd hear one out and about because you have other friends that are into punk and all that stuff and it never really grabbed my attention then in 2004 they seemingly take a little bit of a break right they go away for a couple of years, 2002 to 2004. 2004, they release the album I've to been trying to get to, Chuck, which is top to bottom, one of the best albums of that decade. One of the best albums, I think, out of all the pop punk bands that I grew up on, they nailed it. They hit it out of the park. Like I grew up on thrash too, on pop punk on hardcore punk i grew up on the same stuff they did and they found a way to take all their influences which they had been leaning into a lot but they took all of their influences and they finally got that post malone i know some people out there like rock about post malone what the hell are you talking about why post malone post malone is a master at genre blending he really is if you don't believe me just sit down force yourself to listen to post malone for a few hours and you're going to come out liking him more than you used to he's talented he's a genre blender he's excellent at it he's just really good some 41 found a way to take all their genres that they loved all of them and they mixed them in a blender and added Derek wembley's newfound voice because it's his voice now he's not trying to mimic anybody else's voice it's his and also let's remember this band is actually highly proficient at playing their instruments some of the guitar solos some of the stuff that they you know write is really quite good 
but we never got it in the perfect delivery until Chuck. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hit play on this. I'm going to skim through it. This was to me their shining moment. And it is it's kind of saddening that you know, they're gone. Growing up on pop punk and growing up on a lot of bands like those of you that are in your 40s and 50s, I'm in my 40s, early 40s. It is hard to accept that this is what's happening, that a lot of the bands we grew up on, you know, when Blink came back and did one more time and the single one more time dropped, I cried. Not going to lie. I cried. I, I, like, it, it just got me, you know, like it got me. I thought I really liked Skiba with the band, which I did. I liked the two albums they did with Skiba, but man, when they came back, that, that song drop got me. So I listened to Chuck today as a bit of a, you know, a throwback. And I just was reminded by how brilliant it is. Let's hit play. So all the way down to the opening track, like just an opening track should either grab you and punch you straight in the face, or it should prepare you for said punch. And this track, which is just a, you know, 40 some second intro that's really that's a really sweet sound that they've got going on just in this intro alone they'd never done anything like this to open an album before here comes the punch That's good stuff, man. Throwing those haze in there, those punk haze. How can we fake this Song gives me chills, honest to God. Freaking banger. Song's called No Reason. That chorus too, man. Absolute banger of a song. Playing on their love of metal, their love of punk, their love, you know, it's blended and it's blended really well. Next song, we're all to blame. This is what got me. This song is what got me to listen to this whole album because I heard this and was like, talk about thrash, man. They were angry on this one. And I like angry Sum 41. Just gonna have to deal with the wind. It's beautiful too soft it's like the intro it's like a repeat of the intro to no reason it's like we're gonna, we're gonna rub your shoulders before we punch you in the face and this song punches you in the face then it rubs your shoulders and then punches you right in the face again two songs both two of the best songs they've ever made on the same album same release that just came out Come on, wind. I forgot my windy muff. Then we got angels with dirty faces. Again, we're going to rub your shoulders for a second. Before we give you a little slap slap instead of a punch but still angry then we got some say 
which is a calmer song, a little bit of a throwback in a way, but more sophisticated. I'm going to skip through a little bit, but kind of more of a pop punk song, you know, a little more blinky than the rest of this album, which is like a blend of thrash, metal, pop, hardcore, punk, just so good. Then the bitter end. Thrash, thrashing it up. That's Metallica all the way. I kind of want to get to the solo. The solo is so freaking Metallica, it's not even funny. Listen to that. That's good shit. So good. Is that Kirk Hammett playing for some 41? Sure sounds like it. And I don't care. I'm not mad about it at all. This might have been... Sounds very Death Magnetic, but I don't know if Death Magnetic was released yet. I don't think it was. This is 2004. I think Magnetic was 2007, maybe? So good, man. Then we got Open Your Eyes. That Derek Wembley anger is so good. Then we got Slipping Away. Which is just a soft banger but it's a freaking good song all their influences on this one man all of them mixed perfectly into into the sum 41 way of doing it i'm not the one is next Skipping through a little bit. There's not a weak song on this album, I'm telling you. Welcome to Hell. Pennywise. This this takes me to Pennywise a little bit. Definitely Pennywise. Pieces is the next track. It's so great. Such a good one. Green Day. This is very Green Day-ish. Like warning era Green Day. So good. Then we got There's No Solution. Which oddly reminded me of Lincoln Park. Which they like to rap a little bit here and there. But this, this opening here. Just makes me think of Lincoln Park. Got some ambient sounds in there that sound like Lincoln Park. Inkin Park. Inkin! It's like they found a new influence and blended it in there just a little bit. Then we got the song 88. Mm, Yeah. Get it, wind. Get it. Next time I'll put a windy muff on this, I promise. I think that's an instrumental. Nope, we got words. Been a while since I heard the end of the album. So good. Newts, N O O T S. They killed it on Chuck, man. That was the last track. This band absolutely killed it on that album. And then they they stuck with some of that more Iron Maiden-ish Metallica stuff on uh, 
what third i can't remember what that album was called uh they oh there was under class hero in 07 i think they went pop punky a little more and then screaming bloody murder and i think they went a little new metal not new metal but like newer style metal and then they had 13 voices which if i recall was back to thrashiness a little bit order and decline haven't really listened to that heaven and hell heaven and hell reminded me of does this look infected and all killer no filler but listen on on a day that's important like this where Derek wimbley releases his memoirs again i'm not even a huge fan of this band like i, I just wanted to kind of talk about being a huge fan of that album like chuck is one of the most underrated rock albums i've ever heard and i just think it absolutely kicks ass every single track top to bottom like it is it, it is in heavy rotation throughout my life i haven't listened to it for a long time until today maybe a long time by you know five months six months something like that but man if you if you love pop punk and you love punk and you love hardcore you love thrash and you like a little iron maiden mixed in there a little bit of beastie boys here and there uh which they didn't really do any of the rap stuff on that chuck album but there might be one instance of it that album is a damn revelation and this is why i titled this when a goofy band found greatness because they're pretty goofy you know pretty pretty goofy stuff and mostly non-original and and you know to it's it's hard for a band to even be original this late in the game because there's influences on just about everything the wind tp but some 41 found a way they found a way to take their influences melt them down and the sum became greatness at least on chuck enjoy you some sum 41 today i recommend chuck and uh does this look infected is is a light recommend and uh but chuck chuck is chuck's the shit man chuck is the shit that album will go down in infamy in my book as one of the best things that a band i don't really love dropped kind of like jimmy eat world bleed american never loved that band but bleed american all-time album chuck all-time album it's in my all-time albums playlist if that tells you anything congrats to Derek wimbley and the boys on having nearly three decades of good times and thanks for dropping chuck it was huge in my life and it could be huge in yours go listen to it peace out and to some 41 thanks